Welcome to King's Court. This is Divinity Original Sin 2. There's a lot of hype coming about this game. It's about to come out. I think uh, the release date is actually the 14th of September. Uh, so today we're actually going to just go into pretty much the start of this game. Uh, just a note, I did actually go through the, the very beginning intros. Um, so that way I don't really spoil some of the intro to the game. But I am going to be picking up right after you get done with that, that introduction to the game. <clears throat> For this purpose, I'm going to try to stay away from storyline specific stuff. Uh, so try to get through it as quickly as I can. So that way hopefully you guys aren't able to really read it. Um, and the reason being is I want to make sure that the lore... Um, for the game is still there for you and, and the awe of like the storylines and it's some of the stuff trust me it's pretty good so it'll, <laughs> it'll get you some good times so for this game load this up now for those that are, don't know that uh, like what is Divinity Original Sin 2 what style of game is this it is an RPG but it is a overhead view RPG where it's more tactical in design. Um, so this game in specific, in comparison to other games that are like it, there's a lot of environmental effects to this game. Uh, and that means like there could be barrels that have like water in it, there could be barrels that have oil in it, you can, you can actually destroy those barrels and oil will come out of it. Uh, the effects from the, these things will take, take to anybody who goes through it. <coughs> So you have, uh, like, oil will slow, fire can make you burn, if there's water it'll make you wet, which doesn't sound so bad, but if you use electricity on anything that's wet, it will stun them. If there's pools of water and you use electricity on it, it will spread electricity through it, and it will actually stay electrified for a while. Uh, and that will make it to where anyone who goes through, uh, not only will take damage, but also runs the chance of becoming stunned. Uh, Let's see, on top of that, there's cold, like ice, right? So if you use cold on water or anything that's wet, they, there's a chance they'll become freezed. If not, they'll be chilled, so they're slowed. It's like in this case, you can see right out right out the door I'm wet, and this is kind of what I'm talking about for the the uh, effects, okay? So like if I come over here and I get in the water, I automatically become wet. If I were to electrify this, all of this would be electrified, and anything that went into it or came out, out of it um, or not out of it, but anything that went into it or ran through it would become electrified if they don't have magical armor. And the armor portion is something that they, di they did differently. Um, this game. Which has made some interesting elements to it. So, just because there's effects doesn't mean the effects automatically take. People have defenses against things. So, if you have magical armor, um, things like the electric damage, fire damage, stuff like that they will go against your magic armor. If you don't have any magic armor, like I don't right now, had someone use electricity on me, I would be stunned. Um, vice versa, right? The physical attacks, you have physical armor, um, but the one, one thing to know is that there are magical attacks that base themselves off of physical, which seems to mainly be around necromancy, so it's like, uh, uh, what is it, like life-stealing effects and stuff like that. And for this game, like the, the UI is actually pretty cool. Um, they went off of their old one. It's pretty clean. Um, I'm glad that they made so many of these uh, like toolbars because you can memorize a lot. <clears throat> and when it comes to memory, so like if you hit K, it'll bring up what you've memorized. And then it'll tell you like what skills you have and what's memorized in slot right now, and what's you know, and if you had anything that's not, it would show up over here. And then as you level your skill, um, or I'm sorry, the stat, there's a stat that actually boosts memory, which is if I remember right, memory, right? So every time you put a point in here, you gain an extra slot. Um, and then just like normal, you know, RPG. Elements you get, you know, your strength, finesse, intelligence. So it's basically like, you know, strength, dex, intelligence, constitution, uh, memory is like their own, own portion, and then wits. 
Um, what's interesting is most games, they base wits and finesse together for dexterity classes, but this one they actually separated it, so there's one for your critical plus your initiative, or you're going to be going for your damage and dodge. Um, okay. So as you can see, you can pick up just about anything. Like I've lumpy chip giblets and raw mutton. You know, found a shabby letter. And the nice part with this game, just to bear in mind, is if you pick up a letter, you can pick like open it up and read it. And there's information inside these. It's not a bad idea just to be like even if you don't want to read it, it's not a bad idea just to open up, read it, and and then close it out because if it has like a book or something like that. There might be information in there for quests. There might be information um, to like teach you things, depending on what the, like the book was about. <clears throat> so, like I know in some cases it can teach you like how to make um, certain potions or maybe how to make a, a certain food. So as you can see, I can see a lot of stuff here. You can see I can move this around if I want. And there's poison here. Uh, so like I said, for certain things, um, I've already played um, with a couple buddies and gotten to a certain point. So some some people I see them, but I'm going to pass them up uh, because they don't necessarily do anything special, but they do provide to the story. So for those that do go to play, I do recommend that you uh, at least try to talk to as many people as you can. Um, but of course, with any game, and this one they're kind of serious about it. Be careful what you say. Uh, choices do matter. Um, and some choices can even make it to where you'll attack. And for those that have not played games like this, usually if you get an auto save, it means something's about to happen. Uh, so an example here, if I look at my mini map, I can see that there's these red dots. That means that those are enemies, and those are vicious voidlings. <clears throat> I was going to try to show you something. So one thing to note is I walked up to where I would start combat. You can actually prep things before you get into combat. Like, for example, I could have encouraged myself before I went in. And that, and that would save me, basically, in action before I do that. So in this case, I'm going to be a little more defensive. Let them come to me. Rather than me charging them and wasting my turn. Letting them come to me and waste theirs. So this one they have polymorph, which is kind of cool because you can take on certain traits. So like you can see, I just put on some bull horns, and if you look, you can see the bull, right? And I don't have to like attack them directly. I can actually slam them, come up behind them, um, you know, and then like cripple them. I can eat a chicken one. Alright, look at him. Hey, hey. He's got all the arrows in him. Oh, he's bleeding. Bloody chicken. Ha ha ha. got him out of courage. Alright. And then. And then you see, like, I executed, I got 2 AP. That's something, that's something I picked up as a talent. Um. I should let me see if I can cover that. So, uh, if you're in the characters tab, or yeah, characters tab, which is I in the game. So here we go, I. Um, <clears throat> you have your attributes, but then you also have combat abilities. This is like what you pick out to say like uh, what you're gonna do. Um, so in this case, like like I said, I was using polymorph abilities, in which if you look at an ability, like you see bullhorns, and then right underneath it'll tell you what type it is. So it's polymorph. Whereas, like, Crippling Blow is Warfare. And, and, and I apologize. I'm actually under the weather today. So if I sound pretty horrible, you know, I apologize ahead of time. So you have your Polymorph, um, or I have Polymorph Warfare. 
and you can put it into all sorts of things and they actually tell you what they do too because each one has its own like base uh, type of thing that it does so for example Aetherge it'll give you attacks versus magic armor or extra 10% damage towards it and of course it opens you up to that skill uh, type which is uh, usually like lightning right air type element um, attacks Geomancers, Earth type, but you'll see here it says poison is increased, plus your physical armor res restoration is increased. Um, and they actually come with like buffs for your physical armor, so like you can actually buff yourself and boost the physical armor that you have or somebody else, which is nice. Um, Huntsman it increases the damage from attacking from high ground. This is usually like ranger type abilities. Uh, it's pretty diverse in what it has, so it has like ways to get away from combat. It has ways to hit multiple targets. Um, it has like ways to remove poison. Uh, Hydra Fist is water based, but is also um, healing in this game. Uh, which of course, uh, what's interesting, this one, if anyone played the first one, in comparison to the second one, there's multiple ways to to accomplish healing, and I don't mean like just self healing. I mean team healing. Uh, then you have Necromancer, which is usually dealing, you know, in necromancy death death type stuff. But in this case, it seems to be more blood related. Um, so you heal for damage that you do, uh, and on top of that, you get um, you can unlock necromancy skills, and those skills usually have to do with like absorbing life from a target. Uh, pyrokinetic is your fire, and then you're just straight up damage. Um, scoundrel is like your thief or assassin, and you'll see here they get a, a critical modifier and move, and then summoning is is actually pretty interesting. And a lot of people are complaining that summoning might be a little bit too overpowered. Um, I won't get into any of those debates for this video, so. Just know it's it's nice. Um, and then you have like defense skills, so retribution is you know returning damage. So it's like thorns, basically perseverance is uh, restores magic armor after you recover. Um, so like people doing stuff, you'll automatically restore some of your armor. And then leadership is like a buff to everybody, increases resistance and your dodging. And then of course like, you put points into your weapons, and they give you certain things. So usually it'll be damage and a certain type of trait that you'd expect from it. So like dual wielding daggers, right swords, that kind of stuff. You get extra dodge. Um, ranged, you get extra critical chance. Uh, single handed, you get extra accuracy, right? And then two handed, you get a multiplier. So it's extra damage on a crit. Uh, and then you have civil abilities to help you out, but talents is the thing I was actually coming in here to talk about. So, just with most our roleplay elements, you have um, talents that you can unlock at certain level intervals. And I believe in this one it's four. I noticed like once you hit level four, um, I got one. So I'm assuming at level eight you get another one. Um, but in here you'll see like there's a lot of different things and they give you a lot of different stuff. So like glass cannon, you know, hey, you start the combat with maximum AP, but magic and physical armor do not protect you from statuses. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, maximum AP is six. So like you usually start out with four, so that's saying you will automatically get two extra every round. Um, and then there. So that what I picked out was Executioner, so I get 2 AP for every time I kill something, uh, which is nice because I'm doing two-handed, so I'm supposed to be heavy damage, uh, and if that happens, uh, basically I get a free attack out of it. And then everything you kill will also get stuff. See, I found a random character here. So, you just, to initiate talking, you just walk up to him, 
And in this case, I'm actually just going to leave their storyline towards this guy. Um, but just a side note, he is a character you can pick up for your team. You know, like, as you can see, I'm currently running this by myself. Uh, and by by myself, I mean I just have my one character. Uh, I'm not picking that guy up because I know what he is. So that guy's a tank based. And since he's tank based. Oh, yeah, there's a cat somewhere. There it is. Uh, but yeah, since he's tank based and I'm a two handed fighter, um, not a lot of points. So right there, you can see, oh, hey, my guy found something. And. Here's where you, you would dig, but I need a shovel. Um, one thing to note is if you're a lizard, you don't need a shovel. You can actually just dig for free. Which is kind of cool. That's awfully noisy, huh? Alright, remember what I said, autosave. Something must be about to happen, right? Try to not let you see too much of the story there. It's pretty brutal, though, right? She just. Yeah. I think she, like, sucked the soul right out of her or something. Anyway, so, in certain times, you'll notice, like, you get an arrow and then these little green ticks. That means you leveled. So, in this case, I get to pick out some of these. Uh, and then in this case I want my two-handed. Uh, I highly recommend that if you can put it put at least a point in the lucky charm. I also recommend that you at least have a point in persuasion for playing. Um, persuasion affects uh, certain uh, conversations that you have and making them do things that you want or trying to avoid things that you don't want all good reasons to try to avoid the conversation or or have persuasion I should say okay so in this case save the game all right here we are a bunch of people now one of the cool things to know about this right is you could talk to just about anybody and even more so you can actually trade with a lot of people so in this case they have a lot to talk about but
Anyway, so there's one of the Earth abilities, uh, so you can tell that this guy's a Geomancer. Put an oil on the ground, and earlier he contaminated the oil so that it became poison based. Um, that right there, that's actually the scoundrel abilities, so that's where they can um, teleport and uh, do like backstabs and stuff like that. And, <laughs> and apparently he had a fire arrow. Anyway, good thing that they uh, finished that uh, little problem they had there. Uh, now I can just take their stuff. Yeah, look at that. He even had a club. How nice. Okay. This is the first town. You can see that there's a lot of yellow dots. There's a lot of people to talk to here. Um, in this case, like, and essentially this is the first city, which, once you get here, if you're playing by yourself or even playing with a friend, um, whatever you're doing, if you don't have a full party, you can actually, um, fill in your team here. So, like, you, there's people here that you can talk to, and they will actually join you. So... Here, for example, this chick is one of them that you can pick up. teammate yay um, so in in the game obviously for the teammates that you have uh, you can pick out what the, what they want or what you want them to do or have their abilities um, in this case like the conversation actually leads to where you can choose different types so like in this case I want her to be a rogue but you could tell hey I want you to be more dexterity based which makes her kind of like a ranger um, I forget what some of the other options are but, uh, in this case, I will use this and this. She's already got that. Let's go with... Hmm. Necromancy. Um, one thing to note too is for this, these uh, rogue types, right? It's especially scoundrel. The abilities that they have says it requires a dagger. So, like for example, I can put a lever, dagger, and then a, a hammer or a club, but I have to at least keep the dagger there. Otherwise, it that won't work. 
Um, her abilities won't work, I should say. I have an extra shirt for you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and that's the other interesting thing, too, is when you equip people, uh, the appearance does change. Like, my guy has got, like, you know, looks like his clothes. But for her, I actually put a shirt on her, and it looks like she became less clothed. Oh, and then the elves in this one, it's interesting. I mean, look at that. It's like a... It's a, like, 15 pack. I mean, they're buff, dude. <laughs> Let's see. Do I have any other equipment for her? Nope. Doesn't look like it. Alright, so now I... Now I have another person. And then, the uh, thing to note, right, is so you can... They start out linked like that. You can see the chain. If I move off to the side, they become unlinked. And then what that means is I can pick the person and they will move by themselves. Right? So, it, which is essentially really good if you're going to do things like, let's say, uh, try to sneak. Right? So, if you hit C, you can see here, this is all the areas that that dog is able to see. And I can move into it. And look, failed. Right? Uh, if I had better sneaking, it most likely wouldn't have failed. Now, like I said, though, because they're unlinked, I can pick this guy and say, hey, you know what, I want you to go this way. Um, this is really important if you're trying to set up for a battle, and you're like, you know, I'd rather do a pincer attack, or I'd rather give this guy the high ground, and then keep this person to come right in, you know, that kind of stuff. But, while you're at it, you just put them, drag and drop it back onto each other, and then they'll be linked, and you can see that they'll walk together, just like this. So... Take a look around here, shall we? Um, so, certain elements in the game, right? So, the, if you look at this, you can see that this is red. That actually means uh, it would be stealing if I try to take that. And it doesn't mean I can't. I mean, you obviously can. Uh, it's just if you do, and someone catches you or sees you, uh, they're not going to be very happy. Um, they'll call for guards, or they'll attack, something like that. Uh, uh, let's see. So, for example, in this case, um, Wayfair is kind of, it's supposed to be like kind of tanky, dodgy, and then uh, ranged with the uh, um, crossbow. But in this case, I'm actually going to say I want him to be arcane. I want someone to be magical. And then, well, so then you have options. This is the first time I'm actually doing it, which is kind of funny. Um, so we mentioned that, hey, so, you know, summoning's kind of... Uh, powerful, uh, so in this case, I'm going to tell him to go ahead and be uh, a conjurer. Alright, so now I have a conjurer. So, in this case, 
That's cool. They did. They boof, beefed up his intelligence in that. Um, let's see. Go with some constitution. Um, now, in case, like, you know, because I conjured, okay, that's great, but at the same time, I do need, like, a healer. Um, so I'm actually going to pick up Hydro for him as well. barter so bartering is so that you can um, buy or sell things for more value so essentially I'll be giving him a lot of my items and then have him barter and sell and pick up the stuff that I need so here we go we now got it Alright, so like I mentioned, I made him a, a Hydro, so a healer, right, and water person, and there are certain people around the town that will um, sell you particular things. The easiest way to find out, right, is you'd actually just walk up to them, you go to the trade option, which is here, and then you'll see what they have. So in this case, I already knew that this guy was a Hydro, um, so I'm just coming here because uh, what I actually want to get from him is this skill right here, the restoration. But, as you can see, Iphen doesn't really have any stuff. So, I'm going to try something out here. So he's my barterer. I'm curious if, since he's talking, if the bartering works for him. Uh, it doesn't look like it's making a difference. Hold on. These are still 143. Huh. You are my barter. Hmm. I wonder if it just takes to the teeth. Yeah. Oh, nope, that time it took. Here it goes. So, alright. Let's say I go here. Let's just, oh, it changed. So just because I want to see some things here. See, there's 35. Ah, okay. So I do have to transfer all the stuff. So, essentially, to make money, well, more money, right? I want to transfer all of this. <laughs> yeah, I forgot I st <laughs> took paintings. Um, and actually, it's, uh, it's a good note too. Uh, paintings can actually be worth some pretty pennies. Like you can get some good cash out of it. Um, also, like the letters and stuff that you pick up, it's not much, but you can still trade it and get money out of it. Uh, I don't need a water barrel. start. So, come here, go to trade, let's see, yep, so that got me one gold increase for each of those. Um, right there, I'm, I'm holding left control and just left clicking, and you'll see it's just tossing them there. 
this case, I want your restoration book. Oh. Which, of course... Ah. I forgot to give him my money. Where my dude? Here you go. And here we go. So, same thing. There's those. And then I said I want restoration. And then you have to drag over your money and make sure you put it on there. It's very key that you do that. Um, and at least, at very least, make sure that you match um, what they want. So in this case, I'm actually going to give them a little more. Uh, I lied. My math was off. So in this case, I'm going to give them a little more and see if it... Cause if you don't match this value and you hit accept, it will actually piss them off. They'll say that they don't like you. Uh, in this case, I'm going to try to see if I can get a boost to them liking me by giving them more. And there you go. So that increased my attitude towards them. So it's, it's good to know that because I'm pretty sure once you get a certain measurement of attitude, they actually will like sell you things cheaper. Um, and they might even offer you more things, too. Uh, I don't know that for certain, but I would assume that's probably how they would do it. And once you have a skill book, right, all you got to do is you right-click on it, and you can tell it you want to learn it. Or if you need it for somebody else, you can send it to them, and they can learn it. In this case, he's my healer. Um, because he had a memory slot, it automatically put the ability right there. So you can see that there. So... Um, and for example, again, if you go to K, you see, all right, here's his memory. This is how many slots he had. That's all he can have. All right. Now that I have a team, I mean, I could try to hunt down or talk to a bunch of people and see if I can get a fourth. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go with this. And this is just an introduction video, just to kind of show off like the details and stuff that are going on for this game. Um, if people enjoy this and they want to know more, I will gladly make other videos for it. Um, just please, you know, put comments down, you know, send likes, whatever, um, and, and let me know like what you're looking for. Uh, maybe more specifics towards the game, or you know, even just general, like hey, I'd just like to see the beginning go through, you know, and with commentary, that's fine, I can do that. Uh, another thing to note is just, you don't actually have to walk somewhere to go see it, so for example, I'm just looking around, uh, you can also hit M, which will bring up the map, and this way you can kind of see bigger picture, like, okay, I started there, I went there, okay, cool, and there's, there's a quest right there, so that's actually where I'm looking to go right now. Uh, oops. So, by the looks of it, I actually have to come out the other side of the town. So in this case, I went the wrong way. All right, let's go back this way. <coughs> All right, here we go. So we're gonna head back into town. Figure out our way out of here. Actually, it looks like this is our way. Here you go. So you see, I, I click there. I'm not watching them, but they're they're definitely heading here. So here they are. Look at them go. For some reason, my other guy's trapped. <laughs> Look at him, he's a little speedy. Speedy Gonzalez. Woo! Like his little fire trail. That's how fast he's going. Or it could be his wand, but for running effect and coolness, we'll say it. It's just how fast he's going. Oh, look, there's a save, auto save. Everyone knows what that means. Alright. Well, that looks yummy. Oh, hey, look at that. 
Crocodilia. Alright. Hmm. Alright. So, oops. If you remember, I was talking about you can always prep before going into a combat. Um, so, for example, I can summon my incarnate, have that guy out, and then I can even summon a totem. <coughs> oh, man, sorry. And then, as you saw, like the totem was close enough, it kicked off the fight. And now it's now it's my incarnate's turn. So in this case, um, this guy I want to get him close. So I'm trying to. So the the aspect here is he has attack of opportunities. So if this crocodile tries to move away from him, he will actually attack him. And I'll end that turn. And then the nice part is those totems, like as you saw there, they'll actually do their own thing. So I'm gonna horn it up here. Now, you'll notice, hey, I used that, but I didn't hit anybody. Why would I do that? And it's because the AP cost. Well, I guess actually the AP cost of move is pretty much the same. Um, usually, dependent on environment, it's it could actually help you get through. Like in this case, I'm going to charge right through him. Now, can have multiple totems as a conjurer. This is one of the reasons why people are kind of complaining about it because they're saying, hey, you know, it seems overpowered and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't necessarily disagree that it's 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 definitely a strong class, uh, but it's not the only strong class. So I think it might level itself out. I mean, there's bound to be certain differences. So. As far as she can go there. Still can't do it. So in this case, they have it where like scoundrels have a lot of stuff to boost their AP, so you'll see her max was actually higher anyway. That gets me behind them, and this is where their strong point is, so they can actually do extra damage when behind somebody. Failed on his attack of opportunity there. What are you doing, Incarnate? Why didn't you do that? Now, of course, like I said, the oil, you saw the effect, it shows slowed. Slowed me makes it where any movement cost, or any movement that you try to do is going to cost more AP for less. So, like, your, your movement all together is going to be pretty restricted. In this case, let's beat up this guy. So I might actually kill him. Okay. So I still got my bullhorns, but as you can see, um, sad news is he actually took out, or I lost an AP because I'm in the oil. So what I could do 
do this. That kills him. I now have more. And then, of course, come to the other side. Now they're both bleeding. And I can chicken this one. Um, and this is and this is what I'm talking about for this is be like an RPG type strategy. So it's about planning how you how you want your characters to work together. Um, so for example, so I was able to beat that down. I'm able to charge through, kill it, making it to where I can then charge through the other ones and then CC one of them so that I'm limiting down exactly how much trouble they can really cause me. Now, the nice part about totems is depending on where you put them right you get an effect so like for example I'm gonna use blood and create a blood totem and this is one of the details that I do really enjoy that they did is that they made the totems look different so like there's your wood totem here's a blood totem looks very ominous but extremely cool I'm, I'm very happy that they did that uh, and then let's just move him out over here Choices here, huh? Uh oh. Oh, there you go. And we have a death, ladies and gentlemen. There's the oil. Causing me problems again. Blood. <laughs> um. So in this case, I'm hoping for a different effect. Nice. Um, dimensional bolt does a randomized event or effect, so like that you saw it actually uh, did lightning. Here's my restoration. You see, their restoration will actually keep it to where they. Uh, well, no point in doing that. Keep it where I heal over each turn. So now, for oh, uh, that's too bad. So I did have an electric effect on the ground I was going to be able to use, uh, but because he used his fossil thing, I lost that. So now it's just back to oil. Um, and it's a good point right there. So the totems only last three turns. Alright, and that kind of shows you just how tough some of the combat can be. Um, and some of the effects that you can run into. So, for example, you can be very careful. With this easy run, I was actually doing pretty well, but it didn't take much to knock her out. Um, one thing, last thing I'll make sure to close on here is if someone goes down and you have a resurrection scroll, you can resurrect them, which you click on them. Here's the key thing to note. So you can see all this area. You can choose where you want to re resurrect them to. 
so for example if like let's say we we're in the middle of combat i'm like i really need to get that person back but i need to keep them safe because when they come back they're usually at lower health um there is a trait you could or talent you could take that would make it to where they come back at full health but in this case i'm pretty sure she doesn't have it um so like let's say i was trying to be safe and i'm like you know i'm gonna put her uh, away from the combat and there she is right and then that way like oh hey now he can heal her all right that kind of stuff um let's go here all right and of course with it as with everything else uh once you go through something like this you want to save um and it's always good for these games to make sure that you save regularly because you have no idea what you're going to run into and whether or not it might kill everybody. Um, and it's nothing's more frustrating than knowing that, hey, you know, I didn't save for like three hours. I got this far and I had all this cool stuff and then you, have, you died and now you have to reload it and try to go back through it. And with the loot and uh, in this game, it's randomized. So chances are you will not get anything similar to what you had um, in, your, in your run. So anyway, uh, that is it for today's uh, King's Court. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Uh, again, this was just an introductory video just to kind of show off this game. Um, and I, like I said, I didn't want to ruin any story elements, at least not for an introduction. Um, but if you all are looking for uh, more in-depth or uh, just even you know an explanation of the story you know commentary even like reading of the, st the storyline and all all the voiceovers and stuff eventually they're gonna actually have voiceovers so i wouldn't need to say it's my voice but um in the meantime if you guys want to see videos where i'm just playing through the story and then just you know just kicking it man um i'm all for it please just you know state so in the comments or you know um leave a like uh let me know what you think overall guys if you know if you have any uh suggestions please feel free um to let me know all right thanks everyone you have a good one